what's happening in the bench trials compared to jury trials. Well, uh, surprisingly maybe to some of you, the plaintiff wins more often in a bench trial than they do in a jury trial by about 10 percent. Um, the awards, however, tend to be a little smaller from judges than they do from juries by about 20 percent. Also, the big cases, the cases that are a million dollars or over, um, tend to go to juries. Now, that, that, this statistic is maybe a little bit misleading because if there are bigger cases, those tend to be tort cases or cases that have emotional uh, aspects to them. Those cases are rarely tried to the bench or, or more rarely tried to the bench. So I think uh, the fact that it's some four times greater is probably a little misleading. They also found in the Department of Justice study from 2005 that punitive damages, when they were asked for, were awarded more frequently by juries than by judges. Now that that's part of the study is uh, has been contradicted in other studies saying that judges award at about the same rate as juries award punitive damages and in about the same number. Um, so I think the takeaway from all of that is that judges are probably more likely to award plaintiffs uh, a, a verdict, but are maybe a little stingier on the amount that they award um, than juries. And that's going to be important to you, I hope, in deciding what kind of cases should uh, go to a bench trial instead of a jury trial. The decision on when you need to make the decision to, to try your case either to a judge or to a jury. Um, first, kind of maybe basically, um, you've got to remember to file your jury demand. A jury, uh, the right to a jury can be waived. And if you don't file the, re the request for a jury, most people are filing it in their complaint or in their answer. But if it's not done that way, a separate jury demand needs to be made early in the case if you want to preserve your right. I would suggest uh, that should always be done. You can always waive the right later on. Second, some cases aren't eligible for jury trials. You don't, you're not allowed to have a jury. In Federal uh, Tort Claims Act cases, uh, family law cases, cases that seek um, equitable relief, uh, those kind of cases, you don't get a jury. So not much of a decision to make. Um, it's going to be important to you in deciding whether you should waive uh, your right to a jury and instead try the case to a judge to know who the judge is. Uh, that may be basic, but it's important. This is something you can spend months doing. You remember in your last jury trial, you had 15 minutes and some very basic biographical information to decide whether the person who was going to decide your case, case should be on the jury or not. You don't have that uh, problem in deciding whether you should waive a jury and try the case to the judge. The judge is a public figure. Information about your judge is readily available. If not through Googling, then through listservs, through asking around uh, from other people who have tried cases before that judge, what's she like, um, what's her temperament, what kind of results that people had with her. Um, so remember that doing your research on who your judge is and what their tendencies are, that needs to be done before you make that decision and should be done early on. Uh, first, motions for summary judgment. Um, there's two different views on the use of motions for summary judgment in a bench trial. The first point of view is that you file your motions just as you would if the case was a jury trial. Um, because in the rare instance that you win one, even if you lose it, you pre preview your case in its best light for the judge so that by the time the trial actually starts, the judge is pretty familiar already with what your case is. The second point of view, and I think the one I would probably urge, uh, is that there are a waste of time in, in jury trial, in bench trials, rather. You're going to have the same decision maker in the motion for summary judgment as you do in the trial. Uh, that's not the case, obviously, in a jury trial where a judge may not think very much of the case and may grant a motion for summary judgment. Um, 
And if he doesn't, then you get another bite at the apple with the, with the jury. So I, I tend to think that they're a waste of time because you've got the same decision maker. The percentage of granted motions for summary judgment is really low. And judges know that they won't be reversed for dismiss or for denying a motion for summary judgment. Given that, you're going to present the same evidence basically two times, once in a written format, once orally. Um, I think motions for summary judgment probably should be sparingly used in bench trials.